as the season winds down for us here in the Midwest with cool season turf, many of us can look back to a great season. As we look forward to next year, some of us may want to raise that pH in pursuit of perfection. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of In the Lawn with Seth on my YouTube channel, Something with Seth. Guys, first off, I do wanna say, adjusting pH in the lawn shouldn't be a daunting task. Hopefully after this video, you'll have the confidence to get it out there and make those corrections if need be. And secondly, I'd like to thank those returning viewers, especially those ones that have hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And just a couple weeks ago, this channel hit 500 subscribers. And without you guys liking and commenting on my videos, that never happens. And I will have a special thanks to everyone out there that has commented on the back end of this video. But some of you may be asking, Seth, how do I know my pH is off? Are there visual indicators that are gonna tell me? What's that sweet spot for cool season grass? And does it vary between tall fescue, Kentucky bluegrass, or perennial rye? And that actually might surprise you, and it might be one factor why many of us have a hard time getting Kentucky bluegrass established in the lawn. A few visual indicators that you might have low soil pH include an abundance of crabgrass or plantain. Maybe you guys have moss in the lawn and your grass just isn't growing in or you would like it to be, or you're fertilizing and you're just not seeing the results that you anticipated. Now, the problem with visual indicators is a low soil pH or an acidic soil, those visual indicators are gonna be similar to a high pH or alkaline soil. The easiest way to tell where your pH is at is to do a soil test. You can take a sample to your county extension office or you can get a soil test online and that's what we're gonna look at today. Now, most of you can probably just do one soil test but the reason I do two, one in the front and one in back is these oak trees back here. The fertilizer applications that I do throughout the season vary because of the oak trees. I don't have an irrigation system, so if things dry out in the summer, I'm not applying fertilizer back here. The optimal range for cool season grass in general is six to seven. Seven being neutral, so cool season grass tends to grow better in acidic soil. Now my soil pH is just around 5.8, so I wanna raise that up a little bit and get that around 6.6, 6.7. I'm gonna do that by adding lime to the soil. Now there's two forms of lime, calcitic and dolomitic. Dolomitic lime has magnesium in. So if your soil test shows a deficiency in magnesium, dolomitic lime is gonna be the product you're gonna to wanna to apply. For you guys that have applied lime to your soil, I actually do have a special request in the comments below and I'll get there in a minute. If you guys are liking this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Some of you guys might be asking, Seth, you're at 5.8, why are you trying to adjust your soil pH? Now, adjusting the soil pH a little bit is gonna help the nutrients absorb. It's gonna save money if we apply fertilizer and our pH is off. That fertilizer really isn't going to do anything. It's just going to sit there, not activate. Tall fescue can grow in pH ranging from four and a half to nine. It's absolutely not going to perform as well if you're at four and a half or up to nine. Now, as we get to perennial rye, that does well between five and a half and seven and a half pH. But as you get to Kentucky bluegrass, you can see that performs the best between six and a half and 7.2. I did say that there are two forms of lime, calcitic and dolomitic lime. Both are gonna come in different forms too. Pulverized, which is a dusty, dusty powder. It's gonna be messy. If you guys wanna adjust your pH quick, using pulverized lime may adjust it quicker. Pelletized lime, it's easier to handle. It's easier to get an even application, but it's gonna take more time to break down. So the lime I'm gonna be using is the Soil Doctor pelletized lime. This is a 40 pound bag. I got this for five bucks. And just a heads up guys, I see this online for $40 a bag. Don't pay $40 a bag for it. If you can't find it, I'll sell it to you for 20. Actually, just kidding. You can find it a lot cheaper. 
I wouldn't spend more than $10 for a 40 pound bag. On the back of this bag, it will actually tell you how much roughly you need to apply depending on where your current soil pH is and where you want to go. Now that's going to vary depending on if you have sand or clay. For you guys that have applied lime before in your lawn, if you remember the starting pH where you're at, if you had sand or clay, how much you put down per 1,000 square feet and how long it took you to get to the optimal pH level, go ahead and drop that in the comment. It's going to help the viewers out, kind of gauge on how much they're going to need to put down per 1,000 square feet. Since my soil pH is pretty close to six, I want to raise it up to six and a half. What I'm going to do is just put four bags down back here. It's roughly 5,000 square feet. So that's going to be 32 pounds per 1,000 square feet. If you guys do have clay soil and your pH is like five and a half, just know that it's going to take multiple applications of this to get to that optimal pH level. Now, whatever you do, just don't apply more than 50 pounds per application per 1,000 square feet. One thing about this lime, guys, whatever product you use, you just want to make sure that calcium carbonate equivalent or CCE is the highest it can be. Basically, that is just telling you how good the lime is. As far as spreader settings, this doesn't have specific settings for the brand of spreader. Just go a half to two thirds, open whatever spreader you have. You just want to apply it just like fertilizer, north and south and east and west. So when am I going to apply this? now? You can apply this anytime during the fall. I have all these oak trees back here, probably have three weeks or so left of cleaning these up. What I'll do, I'll just apply this the same day I apply my winterizer. And that's after my last mow, after all the sticks and everything are cleaned up. But if you guys don't have a lot of leaves, go ahead and apply this anytime during the fall. And if you're not gonna apply it during the fall, go ahead and wait till the spring. If you guys apply it in the fall, go ahead and do a soil test in the spring if you want to. Just know that your soil pH isn't going to adjust that quick. This stuff takes like 8 to 12 months to break down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this down and wait till next fall to do my soil test. Now guys, I just want to give a shout out to all those people that I personally know that have commented on my channel. They know the importance of the comments. They know it helps the analytics. Uh, my brother Dylan, thanks. Thanks for the support. Dustin, you comment on all my content. Well, almost all my content, but thanks for the support. Kyle, we've talked. You know the importance of comments. You've been helping me out a lot. My friend Doug, you've commented on quite a few of my grill videos. You probably don't even care about lawn as much as I do, but you watch my content. I really appreciate that and all those content creators that have taken the time to comment. I mean, you've got the long care nut. That guy is busy. That guy takes time to watch a small YouTube channel like mine and comment on it. So awesome there. Um, Princess Cut, Perfect Cut, Urban Dad, all those guys that are working, creating content for all of us, and it's enjoyable. Um, Thanks, and if I missed you, probably here at the end, I'll just have a scroll of all those people that have commented on my channel. So I hope this was beneficial. You guys have a great night. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.